Hello and welcome to the TorontoWebsiteDeveloper.com. I am Peter Warsky, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And this is the first video tutorial in a 10-part video tutorial series on an introduction to PHP. Um, so essentially what this video tutorial is going to look at is everything that you're going to need to know about PHP in order to do some basic Drupal web development. Uh, now that said, it's not all about Drupal in this video tutorial series. What I want to do is create a generic video tutorial series on PHP that will teach you the basics of it uh, that you can apply to things like Drupal, WordPress, or even your own PHP scripts. So that said, um, this video tutorial series is going to be 10 videos in length. And what we're going to look at uh, in the first video tutorial, I'm just going to get you set up with PHP. So we're going to create our own local server, um, our own instance of PHP that we can run on our own desktop or laptop. Um, you know, we'll look at an IDE to get you set up and we'll look at some basic PHP scripts to give you an idea of what PHP can actually do for you. But then in the second video tutorial, we'll kind of kick it in high gear and we'll look at variables, followed by operators. We'll look at conditionals, which are considered if else statements. Uh, we'll look at loops, uh, you know, arrays, functions, and then we'll probably touch on a little bit of objects, uh, but nothing crazy. And then kind of do a, a recap of the entire series. So that's what I'm hoping to cover off with all of this. Uh, again, this is always easily adaptable because I'll be recording these as I upload them. If there's something you'd like to see or something that's not clear, leave a comment, let me know, and I can uh, cover that in one of the other video tutorials. And on that note, big favor to ask, if this video tutorial does help you, please give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment, let me know. Always appreciate you subscribing to the channel as well. The reason why uh, I appreciate that is because YouTube looks at all of those um, indicators uh, and helps to promote video tutorials uh, based on that. So it looks at user engagement. And if you help me out, uh, it helps keep these video tutorials free and keeps them coming. That said, let's dive into the meat of this video tutorial. Um, You'll see here I'm on my web page here, torontowebsitedeveloper.com. This is run on Drupal. Drupal is actually run in PHP. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video tutorial, because when we do a module development video tutorial series, which is coming up next, you're going to need all of these concepts. So in order to do a, uh, you know, develop locally on your own machine, what you need to get, um, if you're on Windows, is what's called a WAMP server. WAMP stands for Windows Apache MySQL PHP. Um, Essentially, if you're creating a website and you're going to put it online, like my TorontoWebsiteDeveloper.com website is, um, you're going to need a host. You can always host your own, but you can pay a company, uh, you know, not a lot of money to go and put your website out there for you. Um, a company that I use is HostGator, um, and so they actually host my website and they provide me with a bunch of tools. Apache is the server software that they're running for me. Um, and that's kind of like, you know, your Windows for your computer or uh, your, what is it, Lion for... Uh, for Mac. Uh, Apache is kind of the server software that runs on, on your server, so you can have your web page online. Uh, and PHP is the scripting language that you can write to you know, provide dynamic variables or a bunch of logic behind a website. So rather than have a web page that's just you, know, you typing everything out, um, you can use PHP as a scripting language to pull in a bunch of variables. So, you know, you can look at the date where you can, if you have a logged in user, uh, look up in a database what that user name, uh, that user's name is, and then say, hello, Joe, uh, today is July 15th, right? Uh, so that's what PHP provides you. MySQL, uh, that's actually your database software. So where I said, you know, you would look something up in the database, MySQL is that database software. We're not going to look too much at MySQL in this video tutorial series. If there's interest, we could always do an advanced series uh, and look at that and start uh, tying that in. But in the follow-up module development series that I'm doing for Drupal, we'll definitely be relying on MySQL. So that said, you're going to want to grab a uh, WAMP server. There are lots of tutorials on installing this. It's not too hard now. You can always go start using WAMP and then choose the version that corresponds to your version of Windows. Um, if you're on a Mac, you can search for a MAP server not map server, map server. Um, and it's the same thing. It's just a, a Mac, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and you're gonna install that and then you can be um, running a server off of your computer. And it'll just be local. It's not like people can connect to your computer or anything like that. So don't worry about that. So with that set up, uh, you'll notice that um, you're gonna get this folder here uh, for me on Windows. It's gonna be WAMP. Right. And then I've got all of this stuff and I've got www in here and here are all of my um, my different sites, quote unquote. Right. Um, and so before we actually get into these, what you need to do is uh, really you need to get a good text editor. Um, so I use what's called an IDE, an integrated development uh, environment. And so if I go back over to my browser, um, the one that I use and I recommend is Eclipse. And you're going to want Eclipse PHP. Right. So you can go in PHP development tools here. And you're going to download PHP development tools. 
um, and you can download the all-in-one package. And so what this is, is it provides a nice um, development environment uh, that provides a whole host of things, but we're not really gonna get too far into the weeds on them. Um, but you'll see here, here's the uh, example that I have for what mine looks like. So you can see you got these consoles, tasks, problems, all kinds of stuff um, beyond the scope of this video tutorial, but some nice things, right? And so one of the neat things is if, you know, if I go to open up my PHP tags here, it automatically does, uh, it finishes those for me, it closes them up, and then you know, you'll know you start to notice a whole host of things if you go through this video tutorial on why this is good. However, if you don't like Eclipse, you could always get, uh, I think it's Komodo uh, Edit. There's another one that I've used. Uh, you could get Notepad++, right? Um, I think there's TextPad or something like that. <coughs> Uh, for Mac, or something along those lines. Um, and then, you know, people do use Dreamweaver, but obviously it is a uh, commercial product, so you'd have to pay for that. Um, but anything that you get uh, will work for the purposes of this video tutorial. So um, now with that installed, what I can actually do is show you what, um, you know, a script looks like. And sorry, I've given some things away here. But what I should do is just, I'm going to open up these PHP tags. And this is what you're going to need for every PHP script that you have. Uh, these opening and closing tags. Uh, once we get under Drupal, it'll be a little bit different, uh, but I'll get to that in that video tutorial series. Um, so here I've got my opening PHP, I've got my closing PHP tag. You notice that there's no line after that, right? It closes the entire script. And so that's what we want. And then um, if I save this and I go to my um, browser <coughs> and I've got WAMP uh, running and I've got this little green icon down at the bottom, you can't actually see it. But if I go to localhost slash uh, yt php slash intro dot php and the reason why I'm going there is because in my WAMP server I've got www and I created a folder yt php and I've got intro php there um, if I didn't put this in a folder I just put in the www all I would need is localhost slash intro dot php localhost is actually referring to the host that you're running right there um, that WAMP server so if I go to this page, I'm gonna get nothing, absolutely nothing. And the reason why is because this script, intro.php, isn't spitting anything out. Um, and you'll notice uh, what I should have mentioned, I've got intro.php. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, you have to run these scripts this way from your local server. You could always set this up a little bit differently. Uh, and that's why you don't see that necessarily on web pages. But again, that'll come later uh, when we're doing alternative things. But here, what I'd like to do is just print uh, hello world. Let's save that and then if I go back to my browser you can see I get hello world spit out um, now a lot of times when you're looking at video tutorials this will be the, you know the be all and end all you've just created your first script uh, it's kind of a little crap because all you did was print out the words uh, the words hello world uh, which isn't that big of an accomplishment however if you did get your WAMP server set up without any issues uh, that's a pretty big accomplishment so um, that said because it's kind of crappy what I want to do is just show you kind of why PHP is cool um, so what I'm going to do here is print out this small website, um, very similar to what we just had, but you see I've got uh, this HTML, uh, typical page structure setup. I've got HTML, closing tags, opening tag and closing tags. I've got the, the, uh, the head and then I've got my page title, right? And then I've got my body uh, with a little bit of text, right? And so you see I have all this and I've got echo PHP in these uh, P tags. So if I go and I reload this page, I get the same thing. But if I look at the page source, you see, I've got all of that, but these PHP tags are actually aren't anywhere to be seen. And the reason why that is because, like I mentioned before, PHP is actually run on your server, and then it spits out all the content to the person's web browser who's visiting your page. And so that's kind of cool because you could have all this PHP logic behind the scenes, uh, and people would have no idea about it. All they would see is, hello world, or whatever you're doing. Um, so what does that mean? Let's do an example of that. So just above this, I'm going to open up some PHP tags, and I'm going to create a variable called num. Um, I'll explain what a variable is later. Don't worry about following this around. Um, but what I want to do is I want a random number between zero and 10, right? And so what I'm going to do is say, your number is, and then I'm going to add here, num, right? So I can print this. And now if I reload this page, your number is two. Right. If I reload the page, your number is four, your number is six, your number is one, your number is seven. Right. So that's kind of the power of PHP, because if I look at this page source, I look at the info behind it. I'm not seeing any of that actually being provided. Right. I don't see the code that's providing that random number. All I'm seeing is the random number showing up on the page. 
And so that's why PHP is cool. You can do a whole bunch behind the scenes. No one would ever know about it. Uh, that's why, you know, you look at a WordPress site, all you see is WordPress output. You look at a Drupal site, all you see is Drupal output, right? Um, so get an idea of what I'm actually talking about. Let's look at uh, Zen Habits, right, by Leo here. And if I inspect this page, you can see um, I'm looking at all the different divs and containers and H, uh, HTML classes and elements, but I'm not seeing actually any code. And again, if I look at the page source, all I'm seeing is this output, all of this text, um, HTML, whatnot, but no actual PHP. And so that's why we want to learn how do we use PHP to create a dynamic script so we can take these static web pages where we have to type everything in ourselves and actually create dynamic web pages. So that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, I tried not to go too long, so hopefully this helped. Um, I know it's pretty dry if you have uh, you know any programming experience, um, but hopefully it wasn't too boring, and we'll see you for the next video tutorial where we're going to start covering off variables. So again, if this video tutorial helped you, please leave me a comment and let me know or a thumbs up. Always appreciate subscriptions to my YouTube channel and we'll see you for the next video tomorrow. Thanks very much.